Okay, good morning and welcome to our webinar and introduction to Autodesk Vault Workgroup. Um, this uh, webinar is hosted by Micrographics and it will be presented by uh, Aldred Boyd and myself, Carl Van Royen. Uh, I'll be going through the PowerPoint presentation portion of the uh, presentation and Aldred will be doing the Vault demo side of the presentation. Uh, Aldred, if you can just skip across to the next slide for me. And so uh, just to give us give you a little bit of background about the two of us, uh, we're both industry specialists for uh, Autodesk manufacturing products. Those manufacturing products include Inventor, um, AutoCAD, uh, Fusion 360, and uh, typically the products that you would get in the manufacturing, uh, designer manufacturing collection. Uh, between the two of us, we have a combined 34 years experience uh, with Autodesk products. And uh, as I mentioned, the main products that we support are AutoCAD and Inventor. So we are both certified professionals with those packages. And we are also both Autodesk certified instructors. Um, so when you come into training at Micrographics, all of our instructors are certified. So you know you're getting good Autodesk training. Uh, we've also both hosted classes at Autodesk University Extension in Johannesburg and Cape Town when they've been held there. And uh, that is a nice experience for end users to go and interact with uh, resellers, interact with people from Autodesk, and uh, you know see what is what is new, what's happening, and to learn a couple of new things at that. So yeah, nowadays uh, with COVID and that, we haven't really had one, but in the future, keep an eye out for them. If they do come back, they're always good to to go to. Now on to today's agenda, we're going to have a quick introduction on into what is Autodesk Vault. Uh, so we'll explain what Vault is and why Autodesk Vault Workgroup. So there are three different levels of Vault. We get Vault Basic. Aldred did a webinar on Vault Basic previously uh, that will be up on our YouTube channel. Today we're doing the webinars based around Vault Workgroup and we'll have one in the future looking at Vault Pro. And uh, so we're going to be highlighting across the series the differences between the three. But specifically today, we're looking at the differences between Autodesk Vault Basic and Workgroup. And so today's session will concentrate mostly on the Workgroup functionality. Uh, in amongst the slides, we'll be throwing in some demos so that we can see live action in the software um, what you're actually getting uh, from Vault. And we'll close off with a Q&A session. So Autodesk Vault. Uh, Vault is a product data management software uh, that will help you improve your productivity. Uh, basically what this means is that it is a platform that is installed on a server and your design files that you work with in, let's say, Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD, Inventor, those design files are pushed onto that server and stored in that location uh, within the Vault. And that allows you to control access to the data. And it also allows you to manage that data that's within Vault uh, with some of the, the tools that we'll talk about throughout the session here. And uh, those tools will help you basically improve your management of the data when it comes to things like file naming, duplicate files, uh, re re reusing files in new projects. And that will help you know, improve productivity. And uh, you know, Autodesk Vault has best-in-class CAD integration. It's built directly into your um, Autodesk CAD applications like Inventor, AutoCAD, and even with Workgroup and Pro built into your Microsoft Office. Uh, so Workgroup specifically has a Outlook integration. So you've got some good integration with your packages that you use um, and Vault. So why would you use Autodesk Vault? Um, as I touched on, you know, there's, there's things within Vault that, or options within Vault that allow you to increase your productivity. And some of that is uh, related around search and review of design files. So within Vault, uh, you're able to quickly search uh, within Vault for files. And uh, that search functionality could just be a quick search where you type in a part number, you type in a word like uh, support, and it'll bring back results for that uh, for that keyword 
search functionality can also be extended into properties. So you could search for a, a file where the material property is titanium and you would get the results from that and you can create searches where you, you put in multiple properties that you are searching for. And this way it is quickly, you can quickly find and reuse data from within Vault. Vault also builds or uh, keeps the relationships between the files in mind. So when you select a file, you're able to view the relationship for that file. Uh, for example, if it's an assembly, you're able to select the assembly and see both of uh, the parents, which would be typically for an assembly, that would be your drawings for that assembly or the presentation file. But also you can see the children that are included in that assembly. So those would be the sub-assemblies and parts. So uh, Vault allows you to view the relationships between those files. Over and above viewing the relationships, it also maintains those file relationships. Uh, so if you're an inventor user, you've probably had the scenario where you've opened an assembly and inventor moans that it can't find specific files within the assembly, maybe because they have been renamed or sometimes they've been moved. And Vault understands the relationships that are required between inventor files. And so if anything is renamed or moved within Vault, Vault repairs and maintains those relationships so that you do not have those uh, broken file links when opening up assemblies. And uh, over and above that, Vault also has a built-in file viewer. So if you are a non-designer who needs to view some files or you are a designer that you don't want to have to download and open up the CAD, you just want to quickly view, make sure it's the right assembly. There is a built-in file viewer which uses the DWF or DWFX visualization file format. And uh, those files are generated during check-in and once you're in Vault, you're able to view um, you know, Inventor, AutoCAD, PDF, Excel, various different types of file formats directly inside of Vault. So, um, I did mention this a little bit, but managing files from a central location, uh, being a server-based product, all your files would be stored on that server and access to those files are controlled in that central location. And this allows for uh, what we term concurrent design workflows, where multiple designers can work on the same project. And they're able to do this because Vault is checking out those files to certain users and then locking it so that other users cannot make changes to the files that are being worked on already. And this avoids the hassle of users saving over other users' work while they're busy with it. And so you can have multiple users managing and working on a single um, design. And it also provides a place for you to manage all your files, whether they're Inventor, AutoCAD, Office, or Pictures. You can load that information into Vault, and you can even attach something like a picture to an Inventor file. You could attach a Word document, which might be a uh, like a work instruction or an assembly instruction to an inventor file so that it is easily uh, viewable. You can quite easily find related information within Vault. And Vault also creates that secure area to store your data. Uh, so you get that secure access. You have to have a username and password to be able to log in and get information out of Vault. Vault Workgroup brings us uh, revision and version control. So basic, you only had version control, which tracked the checking in and checking out of data. So every time you check something in, a new version is created. In Workgroup, we are now looking also at revision control. And this allows you to track the design history. So as files are revised and you create new revisions, you can quite easily revert back to those previous revisions or versions if there are any changes or if anything has uh, gone wrong with the design. Maybe you've just gone in the wrong design direction. And Vault also does uh, incremental saves. So these revisions and versions are incrementally saved as far as the changes go. So it's not a completely new file every time it's checked back in. So that saves 
space on the server as far as your hard drive goes. You know, you're not needing terabytes and terabytes of storage space for all of these revisions and versions. Okay, one of the tools that we see in Vault is Copy Design. And what Copy Design allows you to do is create a pre-configured set of rules that are applied to a design where you want to reuse the design and uh, let's say copy it for a new project. So scenario would be that you you receive a or you have a new project and it's similar to an old project. It might be a machine that you sell and you have to customize it. And what what you can do is you can basically take that old design, you can reuse all the existing files that are not going to be changed, and then create newer versions or create new files for those designs that are going to be changed. It might be a certain portion of the machine that just needs to be changed to match the customer's requirements. And in that process of creating the new files, you're able to rename those files and uh, with the use of built-in naming schemes inside of Vault Workgroup. And through the copy design process, uh, a set of design configuration or rules can be set up uh, to handle things like updating of part numbers and properties. And so at the end of the day, you're able to copy a design, reuse existing files, and also copy existing files and give them a new name and the copy design tool maintains all the all the file relationships between the different components, but then also breaks any links with old files that are not being reused. Next, we go on to the Autodesk uh, Vault Workgroup. So specifically looking at workgroup functionality here, we have uh, project life cycles within workgroup and what project life cycles do is it allows you to set your, your files for your projects into a specific state. So the diagram here shows us a very simple life cycle. We have the first balloon there, WIP, or work in progress. So your inventor files or your design files could be in a work in progress state while your designers are busy working on them. They can then be moved into a review state and that might be during the time when the customer is reviewing and they're going to sign off the design and if they're not happy with it that review state could go back to the work in progress state and it could continue in a circle there a couple of times until the customer is happy and once the customer is happy you can then move on from review to the release process where those files are actually now locked where the designers cannot make changes to those files and at that point, you go to manufacturing. If there's any issues in manufacturing, you can go through a quick change option um, where you are just making small changes to the files that don't require a revision bump. Uh, however, if it is a major change, that released file goes all the way back to work in progress and you get an automatic, uh, can, you can configure Vault to have an automatic revision bump. So you're bumping from, let's say, revision one to revision two and you then continue the cycle from there. So this gives you more control over your files, locking those files that are complete that don't need to, to be changed anymore, and unlocking files that need to be need to be worked on. Okay, I think we're gonna move over to Eldred for a demo. Okay, uh, thanks so much, Carl. So with this over here, um, I've opened up my Vault Workgroup, and if you've ever worked with Vault Basic, you'll actually see that this is a little bit different. You know, at the, on the right-hand side of here, we've got your properties and shared views and also shortcuts at the bottom. Now, what we've got uh, over here, I'm just going to go through to this uh, to one of these files over here. And you'll see there I've got my DWG and my part file over there. Um, and what I can do is you can see I've got this file in work in progress. Now, if I want to change that file from work in progress to uh, you know, review or to uh, release to manufacture, you select it and you can click on change state. For the change states over here, it tells you what life cycle state you're in. So you can have different life cycle states. So at the moment, if I wanted to change the life cycle state, uh, life cycle definition, I can even go to a flexible release process over here. 
So in the previous drawing, we saw there was working progress to review, review to release to manufacture, and there was a quick change as well as a back to working progress. Um, and you can actually, you know, you can create a whole string of, of, of a life cycle definition um, as you were. You know, everyone's uh, companies are different, and, and, you know, you can just define your life cycle that, that you want. So I'm going to keep mine on basic uh, release over there. And you'll see it's basically going to take both of these files over here, tells me the state of it, and it tells me what the life cycle definition is. Before I take it, I can go there and say, listen, right, I'd like to go to for review, released, or even obsolete. So these are the ones that I've got in my basic release process. I just go to my flexible release process over here. Uh, you'll see there that it's also the same. So um, I'm not, you know, you know, I haven't really made any changes between the two over there. Okay, so I'm going to say, right, I want it to be released. Okay, it gets an automatic comment over there. So I've configured in my um, in my vault that I would like when I go from um, work in progress to release, it must say release to manufacturing. Now, I want to notice over here, you'll see there, uh, there are two little triangles over there next to it. So it just gives you the state of, uh, of the parts. And click on OK. Notice what happens here after pressing F5. That, oh, let's see, it should have a lock over there. I'm just going to go get this file quickly. OK, so there we go. So I've just... Uh, um, synced the files with the, the, the physical files on my hard drive, so from the server to my, my local workstation. And you'll see over here now that uh, we've got the two, um, you know, two locks over there. So those locks are uh, you know, telling me that I, I can't do anything to the file now. It's, I cannot modify the file because when I take a file from uh, you know, working progress to release, I actually wanted to lock it out to everyone else. But what it also does do is it releases the files to people who need to see it to maybe go manufacture. So the guys on the shop floor, if you've got a computer down there, um, you, you know, they can just go in. They'll be able to see these files now. When it was in work in progress, I've actually set it up that you know, the guys on the shop floor cannot see it. So they'll never be able to open up something that's in, in the process. You know, you're working on the files, designing the files. They'll never be able to open it up and start printing out, a, you know, making a thousand of them. Um, and and you're know, ending up with you know wasted parts because it's the wrong part. They only see it once it's done and it's been released to manufacture. Okay. Cool. Thanks so much. Back to you, Carl. Okay. So the next work group functionality that we are going to look at is project and reporting. And what this allows you to do, it allows the user to go into vault and select either a folder or a folder with uh, linked files and shortcuts in it and it allows you to pull up a report which will give you information regarding uh, what the report is based around so if we look at the image here we have a report that was uh, that is showing basically files that were checked out by a specific user um, and we can see well this report in this case is showing um, the percentage of files that are in a certain state, if we look at that pie chart on the top right hand side, if we look on the bottom left hand side, there is a categories pie chart showing you know, what portion of those files are in the base category, what portion of those files are in the engineering category. And lastly, we can see on the fourth chart there is designer. So they're actually showing you, you know, which files have been worked on by which designer. So if we look there, Lutz D, he's been doing the majority of the work and there's been a couple of other guys working on the design. And these reports are generated within, within, uh, within Vault. And so this could be done by a manager who has access to Vault. He can go in and do a quick uh, report and get an idea of the project status from the, the designs in Vault. And then the second uh, reporting type that we'll look at is actually termed visual data management. And this is done from within Inventor. So this would be more of the designer pulling up a report to help him understand where the design is in the process. Uh, it is also quite nice for being able to get imagery to put into presentations. If you're doing a project report to management saying, okay, this is where we are currently in the project. You know, these are how many files have been released for manufacturing already, these files are in review, you can pull a report that let's say shows a the life cycle state that the files are in. And so it gives you an overview. And the nice thing about this is that the pie chart is color coded 
and it can also color code the actual model in Inventus, as we see here in the screenshot. We have the color coding on the part chart. This is purely showing who has the files checked out. We have a, uh, a red portion, which currently has no name, and then we have the portion for administrators, so 17% of the files or the files highlighted are checked out to the administrator. And so we'll hand back to Aldred at this point. He's going to show us a in-product demo for the reporting. Okay, so um, with reporting, you can you know, run a report on a, on a certain uh, on a folder. So one of the nice things about this uh, you know, in the vault is that it doesn't just have to, you know, if you've got a folder which is you know, specific to a certain project, um, you, know, you have to run that, great. It just gives you the, the report for one project. What you can do is you can create links to maybe a couple of uh, assemblies that you maybe want to pull out all at once. So instead of having maybe 10 assemblies that you've got and you run 10 different reports, then you can say, well, you know, you can create a folder, and I can see I've created a folder over here, projects and reports, and I can drag and drop um, links of many different uh, sort of assemblies and then get reports from that. So, for instance, if I go into, uh, let's just go to sub-assemblies over here, I maybe want to grab a report from this assembly over here, and I just right-click, drag into my project and reports, you'll see they create a link. So, it created the link over there, you'll see it's now created a link to that, and you'll see the, the little icon actually shows me that these are all shortcuts that I've dragged in over here. Now, I can then right-click, sorry, select this folder at the bottom over here, and click on report. So these are pre-configured reports uh, that come with the package. You can go and you know create your own reports as well. Um, I'm going to create a, a file by lifecycle state report and click on OK. So what it does, it runs this report over here and it opens it up. I can print this report out as well and we'll see there. Okay, so I've got released. Um, I've got the different uh, sorry categories over here: standard, design, representation, office, engineering, and base. In the different uh, lifecycle states, so released, uh, work in progress, and full review. Um, there's a lot of files over here that actually aren't in my lifecycle, or have got a uh, uh, just on the base category over here. So if I take a look down over here, it tells me the file name, um, if it's an assembly or a part, and in the category as well. And then I've got, if it's in a certain release, the state, when it was checked in, who it was checked in by, and then the comment as well. Um, on the top left-hand corner over here, I can just you know, quickly go to what's all just uh, work in progress. Okay, there's 76 files there. What's been released? Uh, there's five files there at the bottom. And then what's sitting in for review is five files over there as well. Okay. So I'm very quickly able to just go and see what's, what is over here, pull out the report, and go and see what's going on for the project. Now, if I go through to my inventor portion, um, let's go into inventor over here. You'll see I've got my components over here. Um, and I can do the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my data mapping over here. So we go through to our uh, vault tab, and we go to the data mapping. So with the data mapping, we'll then go search for my report template. So this is the same report template we we asked to, um, you know, to open up in the Vault Explorer or the Vault Client, and then I'll go and click on Generate Report. So it generates the support of the report, and it will then give me a chart. Okay, so that's what I've got over here. So we've got here um, Office files that are work in progress. Um, Engineering files, 13.6%, 4.5% is design representations in work in progress, and then we've got some base files which are um, in work in progress, and actually some that haven't been assigned anything. So I haven't actually assigned them a category, well, it's in the base category, but I haven't assigned a life cycle that goes through to those products. From this over here, I can say, right, apply color mapping, okay, and there we go. So now it goes and maps those colors over there. If you do not like these colors, you can go in, right click, and you can override the color as well. So I can say, look, right, it's gonna be a nice green like that. Uh, let's go and map the colors again. Okay, so it looks a little bit uh, green over there. Okay. So then we can go in and just see exactly what's going on with each of these files over here. 
Um, and as Carl said, if you want to, you can take some screenshots of this, put into a report, a management report, uh, to see the, the process of where all your files are in your project that you're currently working on. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, cool. Back to you, Carl. Okay, thank you, Aldrin. So the next thing we're looking at in work group is the job server. And what the introduction of job server helps with is it gives us the ability to pass off certain processing jobs, certain things that may have happened on the designer's computer and locked up the designer's computer as far as resources go. And so the job server, um, you would enable that on the server side and you would have a computer that could run as a job processor. Now that could be the designer's computer and that processes jobs after hours or it could be a dedicated machine in the office that only processes the jobs um, and no one sits on it and designs on it. And so there's various ways in which you can set up the job server and the job processor. And the kinds of jobs that would actually be um, generated or that would work on this process is, uh, I think, the, the easiest example or the most common example would be the creation of those DWF viewable files. So uh, if we're looking at, let's say, Vault Basic or even Vault Workgroup and Pro, when you check your files into Vault, you have an option to create a visualization. And that visualization, if you were in Vault Basic, would have to be created on your computer and then pushed through to Vault with the files. But with Workgroup, you can say, well, don't do it on my PC. Send that to the job server and let the job server take care of that. And so that you aren't sitting there watching your files check in and generate viewables as it goes through that process. Uh, with Workgroup, we'll discuss a little later on about PDF creation. The job server also will handle the PDF creation. And there are various other job types. Um, I'll just go into, into that in his demo. Uh, one of them is also synchronizing properties when you release your files to make sure properties are all set up. So that is the job server, and I'm just going to do a demo, quick demo to show that. Okay, so back in Inventor, um, we can see that I've got a whole lot of files that have been checked out over here. So if I select these files and I say, right, I want to check it in, okay, when it brings up the check in multiple files dialog box, you'll see at the bottom of here I've got some settings. And with the settings, as we're, we're talking about that, it's got the, the, the job server. So visualization files that once you want to generate from this, you'll see that, you know, create during checkup, but this would lock up your computer and you would then have to sit there until all of the files are, have been actually created. Um, you know, you don't want to do that, you know, sort of, you know, your time is precious. Um, you can do send to the job server as well. So I'm going to send to this job server and click on OK. You know, you can give a comment, OK, visualize. And then we are going to go over here. Now, it sends it to the vault. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where the job server is over here. So this is my job processor. Now, my job processor, I'm just going to go and we'll run. The job processor runs every 15 minutes. You can change that. So there are some XML files you can go and change over there. I'm going to go pause this and then just resume. And you'll see that now it starts creating those jobs. So it's now creating those DWF files uh, for all the, the components that I've just put in there now. Now this is you know, sent out to another server, another computer, so it doesn't lock you up and you can continue working. If I just go to administration over here, you'll see there I've got job types. And these are the different job types that we're talking about. So um, you'll see at the top here, we've actually got a micrographics export and notification. So if you want to create uh, your own job types that aren't the standard that comes with Vault, you can do that as well. This micrographics exporter uh, job type is a, a, um, a program that we, an add-in that we've got in for, for Vault, which allows you to export out uh, sheet metal flat patterns plus the B side as well, um, as well as create step files for your parts and assemblies and DWX files as well. But allowing you to be able to save it on the um, on your on your desktop or your server somewhere, um, as well as back into the Vault as well. So this is something that we had a um, a client request for us, so we created it, and that's it. So I've actually said this must be part of that uh, job processor. You'll see over here I've also got PDF creation, DWF creation, and as you go down, if it's ticked, it'll do it. If it's not ticked, so you can see here, 
creating, uh, you know, DWF files for Revit files. Okay? So that's not tick because, you know, I don't want it all Revit family files. Revit project and families. NWC, uh, updating your revision block. You know, that can be done through the job server as well. So you're not actually, um, you know, sort of, as I said, locking yourself down uh, for this job processor over here. So just, uh, if you need it done, rather do it on the job processor, it'll save you a lot of time. I think that's it. Uh, back to you, Colin. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as I alluded to in the job processor, there's some PDF options as well. So with uh, Bob Work Group, we look at the introduction of being able to automatically publish and manage PDFs within Bob. And uh, this is actually a very nice introduction because you know, we could create our 2D files and we'd have them in, let's say, an inventor format. But how do we get that to people to read that don't have inventor? And PDF is sort of the, the most widely used neutral format for sending documents. So Vault Workgroup has or introduces the ability to either automatically publish those PDFs during a life cycle change. So that would happen, let's say you do it from work in progress, you release you change your life cycle state to released, that can trigger the creation of those PDFs. That can then be run on the job processor that we just covered. Uh, so those PDFs are then automatically generated. Uh, so today I could do a release and it goes into the job queue and uh, maybe later in a couple of hours time all those PDFs are generated or tomorrow morning when manufacturing starts up, those PDFs are generated and they'll be able to access them to manufacture from. Uh, this can also be manually done as well, uh, where you could right click on a drawing or a file and say, okay, I want to create a PDF for this file. And that PDF would then be generated for that. And uh, yeah, we'll go hand back to Aldred for a in product demo. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my uh, vault over here. Okay. So with the vault, so as we said, you can do it automatically, um, but if you, you know, sort of want to do it sort of in progress, uh, you can do it over here as well. So um, what I've got in my, I've got my DWG over here, so it works for DWGs and IDWs as well. Um, and if I had to go and, okay, I'm in release states already, so if I had to go, you know, back to work in progress, back to release, would send it to the job processor and create that PDF. Um, I'm just going to show you, to, to manually create it, you can just uh, select create PDF over here. Okay, what that does is it still sends it to the job server. Okay, so you can either automate it through your life cycles or just by right clicking and saying, listen, right, create your PDF, send it to your job server over here. Let me just pause that and go resume. You'll see there, Autodesk Vault PDF create. And once that's done, it will reflect now back in the same folder that I, I've done over here. So you'll see there it's running the micrographics exporter as well as running my uh, PDF over there. Okay, so I'm going to go and, sorry, just press F5. And you'll see there it's now created my PDF um, down over here. And you'll see there is a, a preview of the PDF at the bottom of there. It's also locked it as well, so it's put into a release state. So it also synchronizes the uh, the state of the PDF in accordance to what your your drawing your 2D drawing file is as well. So everything is on the same level. Back to you, Cole. Okay, awesome. Nice quick little demo there on that one. And uh, that brings us to revision control. Uh, so we mentioned life cycles earlier, and we saw that chart where we went from work in progress to review to released and possibly a quick change if there was a small change that was required once in release. But we also had that part where we went from the released all the way back to work in progress. And that typically, that interaction there would typically have to bump up the revision of the component because you're doing a major change. Files and drawings are already on the production floor being manufactured that new revision is going to trigger a document control process where you would have to go and remove the old revisions off the manufacturing floor and issue new revisions so that everyone is up to date with the correct changes. 
So inside of Vault, when that happens, your life cycle can bump the revision. So what we're seeing here is um, those those file uh, file revision dialog box that is showing us the revision column there uh, with a point one point one. So we've got three different levels of revision: your primary, secondary, and tertiary. And so this can be controlled when you are bumping a revision in Vault. Which of those levels is the level that you bump up? And uh, what this does is it will bump it from, let's say, A to B, and the designers are then working in the work in progress B revision, and you're able to then work in that revision. So um, once you're done working in that revision, you would then go through the life cycle states again. If you go, you could go straight back to release or through the um, for review and then released state as well. And Eldred is going to show us here quickly a demo on where you would find those uh, settings, or the release options. Okay, so let's go to our. Um, no, that's just that. Okay, so I'm just going to go to uh, these two files over here, and I'm going to change the state back to work in progress. Okay, so what you'll see over here, we'll see we're setting both on C. Uh, going to go back to that and you'll see that now it's gone to work in progress and it's now on revision D. And then I can go and you know check it out uh, and, and go and modify it, so let me get this quickly, and work on it and then um, once I'm done with that I can then go and um, maybe I'll say look you know it, actually I did a minor change, yes it's revision D but I can also go additionally change this to say, well, I need it to be a secondary or tertiary bump over there. So it's going to go D1, D1, D1. Um, you do have different revision schemes as well. So I've just got a standard alphabetic format. So you don't have to go A, B, C, D. You could do 1, 2, 3, 4, or A, A, B, B, C, C. So you can go and, you know, do a custom revision scheme over here as well, which you can then also put into your uh, life cycle, which then will automatically change it as you have programmed um, it before in your template. Okay, so once I've done that, um, once again put in comments, they can just sort of track what's being done and why you did it. Click on OK and it's going to go back to your E1 over there. So yeah, so um, you know, changing revisions, you can also um, have these revisions reflect on your, um, your revision tables. Uh, so you can map all of that to certain I properties that you put in your DWG. So as you're changing it over here, it will go and change the job process as well, um, the, the changes you're making here while you're working in your Vault Explorer or Vault Client. Okay, so simple as that. Cool, thank cool. you. Back Alton, you can, yeah. Cool, Alton, can we quickly just look at the history tab and we can see the revisions and versions in the history tab for those files. Okay, so, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at that so you'll see them. So there we get the, the revisions listed and at any point there you could go back to a previous revision and pretty much get that file and check it, see what has changed between those. Cool. cool. Okay, then we get on to sort of uh, an admin side of things and looking at data security and what extra flexibility work group gives you. Uh, so, you know, so with basic it is a very basic vault, so you don't have many roles within the vault. But including the life cycles and life cycle management, we need to expand the roles that the users have. So when we're looking at flexible data security, we could look at users having more roles within vault to, let's say, manage or edit or change um, files within certain life cycles or change the actual life cycle definitions themselves. So we need to be able to have better control over who has access to change what within Vault. And so Vault Workgroup brings in um, some more roles within that. And uh, we're going to have a look there in the product, just to have a quick look at um, kind of the roles that are available within Vault Workgroup. Okay, so with this now we're going to go to the, as you said, administration side. So tools, administration, and global settings over here. 
So under your security here, you've got users and groups and roles and permissions. So you can have certain users, but you can put you know certain amounts of users in a group. So maybe one group is an admin group, another group could be a read-only group, and another group could be a content center creation group. So you know when you do make changes to the group, it'll automatically cascade those changes down into the users who sit in that group. So you don't have to go into each user and then go and change each one individually. That could be quite uh, cumbersome, especially if you've got a very, very large organization. Now, taking a look at the roles and permissions. So if we look over here, you'll see there you've got a couple of uh, roles that come straight out of the box. Um, and on the side over there, you'll see the usage count. So you'll see what roles have been applied um, you know, to how many people. So I've got two administrators, and I've got one document consumer. The document consumer, as you can see, is read-only control over all files, folders, and job server queues. So you actually can't really modify anything. Administrator, obviously, you can do everything inside there. And then you've got some content center administration editor roles. So that's just for the content center components. Um, and then you've got different levels of document editor and document manage, manage, manager. Now, uh, I think about two years ago, two releases ago, 2020 or 2019, um, they, they actually changed, changed it where you could actually edit um, and create your own role. So you could mix and match. Previously, before that, if you are um, using a, a, a previous version of Vault, you weren't able to do that. So what you got out of the box is, is that was it. Um, you weren't able to edit it, so you couldn't mix and match the different uh, you know, sort of roles that you wanted um, into a new category that you've actually created. So yeah, so this is where this is, and you know, you can, you know, if you don't want someone going into, you know, or, or modifying certain components, you can give them that kind of security. Um, and uh, yeah, so so that is that's quite a nice way to control your data and who gets to see it, and who does not get to see it. Okay. Back to you, Cole. Cool. Thank you. And uh, yeah, the next uh, the next thing we're looking at here is integration. You know, right up at the front when we spoke about uh, Autodesk Vault and what is it, we said that uh, you know it integrated with your your software. So we saw there Eldred was in Inventor and he was pulling reports from Vault. So there was that Vault tab in Inventor to be able to pull information from Vault directly inside of Inventor. And uh, this integration extends to, in Workgroup, extends to Microsoft Outlook as well. So in your Outlook session, you would actually have a Vault tab where you can then, you know, modify or should I say check um, check items from Outlook directly into Vault. So things like emails. You may have an email that is relevant to a certain project or a certain design and you want to store that and keep that in storage in Vault so that other users can also access that email and view that information. So that integration is directly there in Outlook. And Aldred is going to show us a little bit more about this. Um, and also one tool that is quite nice is being able to map that um, certain Outlook folders to Vault folders as well. Okay. Okay, so in my emails over here, uh, you'll see there that I've got an Autodesk Vault tab that's been created. And, you know, the same thing. I can go to my Autodesk Vault, log in, log out, check in a certain uh, email that has come through over here. Um, and then I've got my folder mapping as well. So um, in this over here, you can see that I can actually map certain folders to a vault location. So if in the vault I've got you know, every folder or every folder or project I've got there is to a certain client or customer, then what I can do is I can say everything that maybe goes into their folder that's in my inbox must go into the folder in my, in my vault. So you can map those over there. So once I've done that, so I'm going to go and say, listen, right, let's go and map this in. So I select the, my, my email, and I'm going to go check in over here. It says there, right, and you'll see it automatically maps to my Outlook folder over there. I can go and change it. I can so select that and go, you know, browse to another location. Uh, enter my comments, okay, my first email, um, and then check it in. So select OK, and then it will go and check it in over there. So one file was successfully checked in. I'm now going to go into my vault, and let's go take a look for that. So I'm going to go to my Outlook folder, and there we can see. So I've checked that in, um, checked in, and you'll see there my first email, at 10 to 11. 
Um, what I can do with this now is I can say, right, this actually has to be attached to a certain file. So if I go to, say for instance, this uh, part over here, I can say, you know what, I, I need to attach this. Um, okay, so let me just uh, take it. I can't edit it because it's locked. So I'm just going to go back to work in progress. I'm going to do it for both of these. Change that work in progress. Yep. At this point, it would help to have a quick change state just to attach the email so that you don't bump the revision. Yeah. So then we're going to go to our attach, and we can go find that attachment. So I'm going to go there, and the attachment will be in the Outlook. There we go. Open, and OK. So now when I go to Uses, you'll see that I've got an attachment, and there my, uh, my email is over here. So if, if you have different emails, so if it's the same email chain and you know, you, you've got replies coming back and forth, if you want each email to come in um, and be attached, you can go and put it in there. You can't, you can't check in the same email, but if, it's a different, if the email has a different time, it came in maybe previously or afterwards, you can check that in um, and it will then mark it uh, that it's different by the time, um, the time stamp that it's got in over there. So a very nice way to keep control of emails that you do have with your clients um, and then also attach it to the specific uh, product or drawing that you are working on at the moment so that if, if you do have to go find an email, you don't have to go to your Outlook and you have to your search through thousands and thousands of emails. Just go into your vault, click on the uh, drawing that you're working on or the parts or semi you're working on, go to Uses and find your attachments. I think that's about it. Yeah, thanks. Back to you, Cole. Great, so we're going to, well, we're reaching the end of the presentation now and what we're going to do here is quickly show you a, a summary um, with the a comparison between Vault Basic and Workgroup. So our first slide here with the comparison shows you the shared features between Vault Basic and Workgroup. So they were looking at our CAD integration, you know, support for any CAD with uh, attached or inserted files, uh, in, imported files into, let's say, Inventor, uh, your data searching, data reuse with copy design, uh, concurrent design, multiple users use working on the same, let's say, assembly or components, or um, easy administration and configuration. And uh, we're looking at a little bit of uh, integration there as well. Um, the next slide here will show us what we have in workgroup over and above Vault Basic. So pretty much what we have discussed throughout the, the course of the presentation. We've got that visual data management for Inventor with the reports mapping colors directly onto the Inventor model, our task automation with job server, PDF creation, going back into the project and reporting from within Vault, revision control, and you know, so we can continue down the list with what we've basically covered today, that Outlook integration, and uh, the biggest one that really everything seems to be is really centered around is that project life cycles um, option. It also brings the introduction of Vault Office, where Vault Office is a separate license that can be purchased for managers. So this would be somebody that doesn't have Inventor, doesn't need to have CAD integration, but they want to go into Vault to be able to view progress on designs, pull up projects and reporting, um, view designs inside of Vault using the viewables or even getting files and just viewing them in a, a view only like uh, Inventor read only where they can get the files and just view them in a viewer um, and that like I said that is a separate separate license but it allows managers to get access into Vault without needing a full-blown design license. Great, we'll close off with uh, Q&A and Q see if we have any questions from anybody. If there are no questions, then we shall, I think Aldred will close off for us. Okay, I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, Carl, thanks very much. Um, okay, yeah. Just close, yeah. No, thanks, it's a pleasure. Oh, cool, cool. Um, so just closing off, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for joining us in this, uh, this webinar. Um, if you do have any, you know, any questions or anything like that, you can get hold of us on any of these email addresses or give us a call.
Um, you know, sort of we have got four different branches, Joburg, Cape Town, uh, PE and Durban as well. Guys, thanks very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Well, thank you, Colin. Cheers. Cool. Thank you. Cheers.